<laughs> Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. It's Rare Whiskey Friday, it and is. on Rare Whiskey Friday, we go through a bunch of whiskeys that sometimes are larger brands. More often than not, these are going to be smaller brands, craft distilleries that don't have a tremendous amount of distribution. Uh, if you are so lucky as to be in a location where you can get your hands on one of these bottles, you're welcome for the review. Thank you to all the magnificent bastards that sent the whiskey. This is Ben Stahl who gave us this. He's a titan of whiskey. I know. I know. We, look, look. I know. Look. Look. I know. Look. You don't. You don't know. Because, because we've done this on camera. Mm -hmm. We've done this on camera and you're like, hey, maybe I need to like hold off on the Titans. Well, I didn't realize it until, until we I get the rasp burning. <laughs> until we get the animation going. And then you've been pulling out Titan after Titan. I know. It's just all over the place. And you, and then I. Sorry, Ben. You can blame me. Now, Ben knows me. When he stops by on the next Friday, I'll buy him a drink. Make him feel and better. And then the retro, you know how many retroactive tightenings we're going to have to do? It's going to be like a 70 minute episode. Because you keep pulling out, tightening. you keep pulling out the Titans. It's like, look, man, there's a retroactive thing that we're going to have to do. And everyone you do is adding to this retroactive content. Oh, yeah. Instead of just holding off until the thing's ready. I'm about to hire editors, too. I'm about to hire two freaking editors. We can do this. We don't have to keep adding titans to the retroactive list. There's going to be like a 45-minute episode of us just going through the animation over and over and over again, yelling, we're going to be hoarse. They don't get to have their own special episode where it's them because you keep forgetting. You don't pay attention. You don't listen to the dumb words coming out of your dumb little taste hole and just putting it off until it's the appropriate time to have the titan animation happen no! He's like, I'm Daniel. I'm just going to say words. Blah, 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 blah. Flavor, <laughs> flavor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can't keep a straight face anymore. <laughs> I was trying so hard. <laughs> wow. I know. You don't deserve an animation. <laughs> no animation for you. You'll get nothing. <laughs> this is a Thistle Finch. It's a distillery. This is new make This what? is our new make rye. Wow. So not only is it a rye, which is not normally our thing, right. it's it's rye moonshine, basically. Pungent. Yeah. Oh, this is the taste. The taste is... Uh, right there. I don't know how many times I've had rye new make. Neither have I. I'm trying to remember if I've had rye new make. I, think I mean, no, I have a bottle of rye new make from Ranger Creek that he gave me uh, when I was there. But their rye isn't especially... It's not the same as this. Spicy. Yeah, this is pot still, too. Oh, so you have right? all of that rich character. Yeah. They're not stripping anything. No. Out. It's just pungent. And potent. the barrel has not mellowed anything in this. Potent? Wait, what barrel? Is there a barrel? No, I'm just saying they haven't had a chance because it's new make. Oh, good. The it. barrel hasn't had a chance right, to right. like tamp things down. Taste it. That's surprising. Oh, it's 40%. That's why. This is batch 17. Uh, November 2017 was when this was bottled. So I'm getting... It's two years ago. A sweet agricultural barn funkiness. Yeah. Like a simple syrup sweetness mm -hmm. with this agricultural barn funk underneath it. I am going to give you a heads up. We reviewed Thistle Finch the other day on a Rare Whiskey Friday. Okay. And uh, this week, one of the people from Thistle Finch emailed me. Uh-oh. And they're like, hey, we'd love to send you some other things. I didn't tell them that we were about to do this one. <laughs> so make I'm going to sure wait they, to reply. Make sure they send it before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. No, send away. And then two days later, what? <laughs> no, it's not bad. It's just, there's a reason why New Make is aged in oak. It's just not a sipping whiskey. Well, and it's not. It's uh, not meant it's to be. It's not developed, right? Yeah. There's, if you're going for clear spirit, uh, gin? Although this is I'm almost to, botanical on the nose. I'm trying to think of the worst gin I've ever had. And Oh, I've had a bad, a very bad gin. And I'm trying to think of the worst gin I've had and the worst new make I've, I've had. And I think the spectrum of gin is better than what's the spectrum of new yeah, make. Yeah, I think that's true. But if you're going gin to whiskey, I think after uh, some new make has been aged and matured in some barrels really nicely, then there's no comparison. Um, in my opinion, the complexity and the nuance and the depth of flavors that you can get from a really nice whiskey Gin is nice in the right time and place, but yeah, but New Make is a different Drink animal. Drink that water. Different animal. Wait, hold on a second. Is this water? Yeah, it's water. Okay, because as far as you know. So you're about to have me throw down the New Make. Yeah. One, respect for the lulls. <laughs> that would have been hilarious, but two, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you do that to me? We had two different magnificent bastards send us Chattanooga whiskey, if you can believe oh, it. Right on. And so we're going to do three Chattanooga whiskeys back to back. Yeah. Um, but the first one is from Mark Moses. Mark Moses, you magnificent! Bastard. 
And he says, yeah. he's from Chattanooga. He says, hey, if find a few drams of Chattanooga Whiskey Company, Tennessee High Malt 111. Mm -hmm. I moved here in 2004. It's my adopted hometown. I love it. Uh, I was excited about this distillery, but it didn't exactly blow my socks off. Uh, you'll, naturally, I sent a minuscule bottle, so feel free to send, call me a cheap, magnificent bastard. <laughs> uh, my inner moot refused to spring for a whole fifth. <laughs> anyway, Sorry. and he tells us what it is, but um, he's not affiliated. He has no connection to them. Yep. But this is yellow corn, malted rye, caramel malted barley, honey malted barley. So this is a heavy barley or malt. Right. So talk to me about the bourbon. Caramel malted in the honey malt. I don't know what caramel malted is. Yeah. And honey malted. We need Dave on the show to explain that one or to us. Or if you know in the comments, let us know below what is caramel yeah. malted, what is honey malted. They did a long uh, fermentation on this. They had toasted in charred oak barrels. It's at least two years old. And this batch is 8 to 12 barrels. And it's 111 proof. I like the nose. Right? That's where you smell the malt. Right? It definitely, yeah. the rye is tamped down. This and even is, the rye in this is malted. This is like a creme brulee level sugar on top of that vanilla. It's like very sugar, sweet. Like a sugared crust. So much dessert vanilla sweetness in there. Oh, it's a little bit dry and like uh, oh, no. botanical spicy. I'm not getting dry as much as I am. The sweetness is there. I'm getting that crust of sugar, mm -hmm. but this cherry note is so condensed and potent. It's presenting as like a Luden's cough drop, medicinal yeah, it's, cherry. I get that medicinal, but I'm yeah. also, my mouth is drying out. Like I'm getting that. Oh, the feeling of dry. Yeah. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah. So pick your glass, don't finish it. Put it next to this so we know what it is. Oh, oh, rare Whiskey Friday. Mm -hmm. First impressions are what we do here. All right, this First is impressions. the one that they now just kind of standard release. It's called 1816. This is MGP. Oh, okay. Right? They made that, they MGP'd that. Yes, but the next two are from Peter Golden. Peter Golden, you make just bastard. So I've got two. I've got the reserve and I've got the cask strength. Mm -hmm. It's the same whiskey, mm -hmm. but here's the cool thing. They're doing a Solera casking where they take all these old barrels right. or age them and they dump them all into right. one big tank. Yeah, yeah. And then as they pull off that tank to bottle, they refill it with MGP barrels. Wow. So they're doing an MGP Solera cask. This is like a perfume made from bourbon. Yes. That's totally not even in anywhere close to that. No, it's a different animal. For sure a different animal. But it's pretty. You know, it is... Uh... This is less medicinal, less cherry Luton's cough drop for sure, mm -hmm. and more a bit more of a natural cherry, less candy sugar on the nose. It's very woody. You can tell it's MGP. Yeah, yeah. Um, as far as we are particularly familiar with it, because we buy it. Now this is same thing. The cask. cask strength. Okay. This is their tagline. Whiskey to the people. Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> The nose isn't, I mean, it's different, it's more potent, but it's not as foreign to the lower proof as it often it's happens. It's just slightly darker. Yeah, oftentimes you'll get something that's down in the 40% range and then you'll have cast strength, compare them side by side. They're just different, wildly different. This isn't wildly different. This is just the same oh. thing, same thing, volume turned up a little bit on all those notes on the nose. On the taste though, you're making noises. Dude, this is, um. This is crawling in on some of those barrels we released where the Texas heat really screwed with them. Mm -hmm. That's dark molasses and candy. Yeah. And it's got all the dark note complexity that the non-cask doesn't have. The oak definitely shows up more. Mm. You do have that foundational tannic layer. Now go back with... and this one's bright and shiny and almost uh, herbal floral direction comparatively. Yeah. All the darkness is now. The proof, the proof makes Here's why I wanted to hold these. Now go back to their high malt bourbon. Wow, that is a wicker honey on for, for me. And cinnamon. It's a wicker honey for the nose. I got a big explosion of cinnamon now. I, I've got to say that one might win. I like it. Of these three for the most interesting. Yes, most. This one's most up my alley is my preferred drink. Super familiar. Yes. We're in familiar territory. This. That's actually. Is different and unique enough. Yeah. And while still squarely being comfortably. Yeah, and not in, uh, any huge faults. Right. And like nothing that makes you go, mm, I have to deal with that in order to like this. That's no, lovely. I like the hell out of it. Super good. I love the, all the details they put in this. How long they fermented. That's hard to do in a small bottle. Yeah, it really is. It's a good thing I got 2020 eyesight. Are you doing your... No. 
That's a new character I'm working on. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to do a stand-up comedy show uh, where I just tell the story can lyrics I, of old Texas country songs as if they were family stories in the voice of Esther. Can I go ahead and start booing you? I remember this one time when Brrr. we just, we just strapped all the kids into the back seat and we was going Brrr. up to Oklahoma for the family reunion. It was the first time in years. Brrr. It was Uncle, it was up at Uncle Slayton's because he's getting on in the years. Here's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. <laughs> if you fight me, a fight for if a friend. If you steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. us.